Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's a Sketch Monkey here. I'm here at McLaren Denver to have a look at something rather special today. This is the first Maserati supercar in 20 years. You had the Mirage, then you have the MC12 of the 2000s, and then you have this, the MC20. So what I want to do in this video is we're going to talk about some of the spec and tech of this car, but then we're going to dive into this design because I made a video on this when it first came out right here on the channel talking about what I think about this design. I want to let you know now that I see it in real life right here in front of me, have I changed my opinion of this design? And there are some redesigns we're going to make in this video, both in the front, the side, and also the rear. Then we're going to talk about the interior, and then of course we're going to take this beast for a drive. Big thanks to Mike Ward McLaren Denver for letting me get my hands on this MC20 and review it for you guys. I'm going to link their full inventory down in the description. Here's the thing with automotive design. You can categorize a design in a different geo geographic location just based on the styling of the car. For example, you have American cars being pretty big, its size matters, and they're also very boxy in most cases. And then when you go up to Scandinavia, for example, very sleek, minimalistic designs with focus on key graphic features. For example, the Volvo Stores Hammer. Going down to, to, to Asia and South Korea, you have more fun, expressive designs and focus on having fun with the proportions and graphics of the car. But then when you move down to Southern Europe, Italy, for example, when it comes to styling there, it's always been about organic, fluid shapes and proportions that look absolutely stunning with soft surfacing in connection with a couple of key sharp lines. And that's why this Maserati MC20 is a little bit confusing to me. Now, before we go into those details, which is going to be most notable inside view, we have to have a look at the front end design of this Maserati. I think this is the probably the best view for this car. It is a three-quarter rear view, is really great as well. But the front end, you have these nice sculpted surfaces and the high point, the highest point of the front end is exactly where you want it to be. And that is the high point of the front fenders, creating this big, beautiful, uh, organic muscle over the rear axles. Then coming down to these very simplistic stylized headlights with the daytime running lights, having two very simple bars in it, super clean. And I think these uh, designs of the outline of the headlight really suits the front end of this car. And then you have these sculpted intakes in the, in the hood. This reminds me a lot of the MC12, which had the same kind of styling in the hood, but they also had these very thin fins going across here, something that is not available here on the MC20, but I think that was a unique feature of the MC12. Overall, the hood design of this thing, or the front design of this thing, is very beautifully sculpted and very much Maserati. So looking at the lower section down here of the new MC20, I love this grille design. It looks proper Maserati with the Trident logo in the middle. We also have this little detail, which has also been around for Maserati since the 60s. This little edge pointing to the top edge of the Trident logo, a nice little detail. And just look how thick this logo is. It sits outside of the grill by itself as a monument in the front end. I really like that as well. Couple of things though that I would like to change in the front end. For example, have a look at this right here. This wing going down here with the bodywork. I want to have this, I think I want to have it be straight from this line going here straight into this carbon fiber piece of the grill and then add a bit more radius to this section here. I think if we made those changes to the car, it would look maybe a little less busy in the front end, even though it is a very simplistic design of the front end, which I like. But I, I think having this line flow cutting into the grill, I think it would just add something to the design. Coming around to the side view, and this is where I think the Maserati MC20 have sort of split personalities. It's two design philosophies baked into one car. And this is actually what the designers intended for this car. They said that the top half of the design, this part and going up, is supposed to be the Italian organic and the emotional design of the MC20. While the lower part down here with these beautiful carbon fiber intakes at the bottom is supposed to be the more functional piece and I would say the more industrial looking style of the MC20. However, there are a couple of things in the side as well 
that I would like to redesign to make it more in line with the traditional designs of Maserati and less static in the lower part. So what I'm talking about here is the top part looks proper Maserati. I love these beautiful sculpted fenders right here and if these look uh, familiar to you, these side mirrors, that would make sense because they are take, taken directly from the Ferrari 458. Still looks very good, the 458 being one of the best looking Ferraris in the past 50 years in my opinion and then you go back here to these door handles that have just a hole in the body nothing sticking out here with an electronic release on the inside and you have this big intake in carved out of the rear fender also beautifully done hiding any sort of intake that we have on the normal mid-engine supercars right here in the middle. The wheels and tires are pretty beefy as well. You have 20 inch with a 305 millimeter wide tire in the rear. In the front you have still have a 20 inch with a 245 millimeter wide tire. So let's get into the fun part here and let me show you exactly what I would like to redesign in the side view here. So you see this black piece down here. I think this has a very static look. It looks like the lower half of the car is almost Polestar-like in its styling. And what I want to do is bring back some of that Italian emotion to the lower section as well. That means that this black part, I want to have it go downwards further and have an angle to it in the top part and slope down to the front wheel and then have that angle of the top part of the trim going down now have it some sort of connection to this rear end so we have the carbon fiber maybe go up to this point and then connect in the same height as the the middle section with the carbon fiber and i think that would add sort of a sloping line to the design that's needed in the lower part and give it more of that dynamic motion when it's standing still another small detail that i would like to change here on the mc20 is you see this line right here going almost straight vertically up. What I want to do with this line is just have it in more of an angle this way. So we have it pointing backwards to also, same thing with the lower part here. If we lower this section, cutting down into this, have body color lower at the front end, I think that would also give it more of a direction in, the, in a side view when you look at it just standing still and would add some more dynamics to the design. Coming around to the rear end in the three quarter rear view of this MC20, the front end looks fantastic, side view looks great as well, but the three-quarter rear end of this car is just something extra in my opinion. I love the taillights that we have, it reminds me a lot of the Maserati Gran Turismo taillights. There are a couple of things in here I'm going to redesign which I'm going to go into later. Then we have this big carbon fiber bumper, it's completely made out of carbon fiber with the two dual exhaust pipes right stick it out right out of the bumper and i think it's a pretty interesting integ integration of these tailpipes because they don't have a specific housing for them it's just basically a hole inside of the bumper and boom you have the exhaust pipes i would say these are proper bazooka pipes sticking out in the rear end a couple of more details in here in the rear that i love about the mc20 this ducktail spoiler they said that the designer said they worked, they worked with the engineers, they asked the engineers do we need a rear spoiler attached to the rear end of this car to plant it at high speed. The engineer said no you don't, you just need to add this beautiful ducktail in the rear to have stability at, at high speeds. And I think this design looks so much better without a wing back here. Then you have the rear view camera mounted right up there with the reverse lights underneath it in a very interesting position. I also love the cutouts that we have in the window. Very unique pattern for the cutouts right there. And you can see these outtakes here. It's a very simplistic rear end, very Italian in the rear. The only thing, parts that kind of looks a little more Scandinavian to me, are the pieces in the lower part in the side view. And then we have these fins with the diffuser in the lower part of the design. Super clean and I love how these taillights stretches out this design. However, there is of course stuff I want to change in the rear end. And the main thing here is I would like to see what it would look like if we shrank these down a little bit, maybe to this point have the taillight end here and also have a connection with the LED. It stops right here but I want to have a connection with going into the corner and have it a little thicker at the very corner of the LEDs to also add some dynamic feelings to these ta uh, taillights because they are very static looking now with just the same thickness going all around the top and the bottom. So connecting these and have a thicker piece at that very end point of the design, I think that would also add some more dynamics to the overall graphics of the rear end. Welcome to the interior of the MC20, the 2023 Maserati supercar. So in here, it's very interesting here as well. It's very minimalistic in here. There is not a lot to distract you when you sit in here. We have this screen 
right in the center, which doesn't really look specifically well integrated. I'm not sure how it's mounted back here. I can feel the mounts, but it's just right here in the middle without any real connection to the overall designs of the car. The vents are super easy to use. They're right here. You have two for the passenger, two right here for the driver. And have a look at this carbon fiber shield that we have going on to the center console with the nuts and bolts visible. I think this looks really good, specifically with this selector for the drive mode. And this looks super vintage, like an old watch or something like that from the 50s or 60s. And it kind of feels a little bit out of place, but it definitely sticks out at you when you look at it. And I like that it feels out of place because this is a very important feature of the car. Then we have the steering wheel, carbon fiber all around going into the spokes at the lower part and the bottom as well. And you have a flat bottom steering wheel with the launch button to the right. And then you have the start stop button to the left. Very small steering wheel and very sturdy to hold. And it's thick where exactly where you want it to be thick with some Alcantara around the carbon fiber as well. Then we have this shield up here as well. So we have two shields of carbon fiber, one up here and one right over the dash or the gauge cluster. And who doesn't love butterfly doors? There is a button down here, which you just press and then you push the door out and they go up in this very beautiful way. Not too heavy to control. And it also looks very super car -y. And then you have a proper size glove box here, maybe in the smaller size, but it's still there. And you have these seats are also interesting because they don't look super car -y. They look more Grand Tour design of the seats. Not too aggressive, but they're very comfortable to sit in. And in the middle here, you have the reverse button. You have the drive modes for the drive or manual, automatic or manual with the paddle shifters. And you have a volume control for the radio. That's the only knob that you have in the entire center console. That means, of course, that all the climate control settings are software based and software controls. And that's one thing that I wish Maserati would have put a strip of buttons here, just a few, four maybe, something like that. Doesn't have to mess up the interior, but I wish they had some buttons integrated here at the lower section of the screen for the most important uh, parts of controls, for example, the climate and so on. But you need to go in the software in this case. What I do like is we have basically zero visibility in the rear. It's a tiny little slot of window. So the good thing is that we have a rear view camera. I showed you the camera when we looked at the rear view and that then sends a direct feed to the rear view mirror. So you have a pretty decent view of what's going on behind you. And then you also have wireless charging here. And these keys, the key for the Maserati MC20 feels like it's made out of stone or something. It's very heavy, have a nice weight to it and it feels proper quality with the Maserati logo right in here. So what about cup holders? Well, you do have one and that is one single one down here, back here. It's kind of hard to reach it, but who cares? You're sitting in a MC20. You don't care about what, what you drink. All you care about is driving this thing. So what about the powertrain in the Maserati, M uh, Maserati MC20? We have a three liter twin turbo V6 pushing out 630 horsepower, 538 pound, of your pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 is done under three seconds, 2.9 seconds, and it crosses 200 miles per hour in its top speed. The price for this specific MC20, let's have a look at the sticker here. We have a bunch of added options, specifically the most expensive ones are the carbon engine cover and you have exterior carbon fiber package, $35,000 and you have the carbon ceramic brakes, $10,000. So the sticker for this specific one is $310,045. Dollars and it's basically brand new with only about 900 miles on the odometer. And with that said, we need to fire this beast up. Even though it's just a V6, it sounds very cool. So take a listen to this. Now, before we sit off on this driving section of the video, I want to apologize for this super weird angle that you're going to see this in. The reason being, these, the windows of the Maserati are angled in such a way that I couldn't get the camera with the mount that I have up in the correct angle. However, I've ordered a new mount and this should not be a problem in the future. 
Alrighty guys, setting off in the Maserati MC20. Let's see what this is all about. I have it in sport right now. And the thing with carbon ceramic brakes is if they're not very hot, they don't really grip very well. Ooh, oh boy. It's fantastic acceleration. I have it in automatic right now. I'm gonna pop it into manual in just a second want to feel how this uh, automatic transmission handles. The powertrain here, as I said, is a three liter twin turbo V6, uh, 630 horsepower, 538 pound-feet of torque. Let's have a look at how it goes. Jeez, it's crazy that it's just a V6 back there. It pulls like, I don't know what, it's just nuts. All the power is sent to the rear wheels. If you have it in Corsa mode, if you want to take it to the track, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you that with all this power that you have. All right, so pop it into manual mode. We're in fifth gear right now. Do we have anybody behind? I always, always forget that I have this big camera up here. So I'm trying to see behind me in the rear view mirrors, but all I see is the big intake in the rear fender. And let's go. Holy moly. Definitely pulls like a supercar. It's uh, so nice to have uh, Maserati back as a uh, supercar manufacturer again. This is what you want from a brand like Maserati. Uh, just have at least one model like this that really push the boundaries of what a Maserati can be. Wow. It sounds great too. I'm not even gonna say it sounds great for a V6. It just sounds fantastic. There is, what I like about this, the old Maserati 3200 GTs, for example, they had some insane turbo lags. And some people don't like turbo lag, but I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority when I say that I actually like turbo lag. It adds to the excitement of driving. And we still have some turbo lag here in this car. It just goes like nothing else. These type of cars, it's like when you jump into one of these and you drive these and you drive normal cars on a regular basis, it's just on a completely different level when it comes to experience of driving a machine like this. The paddles are super quick too. I love how they stick. Uh, how they stick around all down. They're very long, so you don't have to worry about not hitting them when you want to hit them. It's very easy to, um, to, to find them wherever the steering wheel is. What a fantastic car. Huge thanks to McLaren Denver for letting me review this beauty today. If you're in the market for one of these, the MC20, this specific one, go and check out their entire inventory. They even have a McLaren Elva right in there in the showroom, which is not super rare car. And as for Wade, he's gonna help you out. Thank you for watching, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.